Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 59 of our new Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we're going to make affirmation flowers. We made these before in, in different series, but we're going to make them again for anyone who hasn't seen them because this is one of my favorite projects. So we're just going to take one of our balloons and we're going to blow it up very small. Just a nice little balloon. And then to tie your balloon, you're going to hold this, this part of your balloon between your thumb and your first two fingers. Then you're going to take that tail, wrap it around the back side or between your hand and the balloon, and then come up between your fingers. You're going to come up and go between your fingers like this, and then just pull this over top, hold that, and pull it through. So now we have a nice little balloon. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to choose two colors. So I think we'll do um, some yellow and some maroon. And we're going to use our paint palette, just the lid off of anything that's plastic. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the edge because we're gonna wanna use this side over here. So we're gonna do this side. We're going to put some of our red and then some of our yellow right next to our red. So, and you want about the same amount of each one. And then we are just going to take our balloon and we are going to push it down right in the middle of the two so that we have some of each color. Well, that red doesn't show very well, does it? But it's there. And then we're going to just squish it a couple of times on this side. And then we will take our balloon and just push down on our, this is a piece of our cardstock. So again, we're just going to, and try and hold your balloon so you put the yellow on the same side and the red on the same side each time so that they don't smear too much and then just kind of tap it off over there and then come over here and put another one. Now, the more you tap it off, the thinner your paint will be. I'll show you that in just a second. We're gonna come down here and you wanna push your balloon down a little bit. That spreads that paint out to make a nice size flower. And so we'll just keep doing that until We've used up all of our paint, and sometimes it will, you don't need very much, and it will make a whole sheet full of flowers. But I'll show you here. Here where I popped it off, I, I just put it, I don't want to say that. I just kind of stamped off one time. And look how thick our paint is, where the first time I did it, I stamped off twice, and that paint is very thin. So it dries pretty flat either way, even though this does have a bit of a, you can see where it's a little raised. When it dries, it kind of dries flat. But um, I'm just going to kind of move that over a little bit and put this over here. So again, I don't know which one was my paint. I believe my paint was here, red and yellow. Okay, and then just tap it off over there. And I think I just turned that around. I did. So see now my paints have mixed a little more than just half and half. Well, it is what it is because that still looks pretty cool. And so we're just going to, you can also take your paint. We're starting to get thin here, so I don't necessarily need to tap off. You could put your balloon on there and give it a little bit of a twist. That kind of mixes your colors a little bit. And I normally find that um, I get somewhere between 12 and um, 18 out of just those little tiny bits of paint that I put there. I'm going to set this aside so it can dry. And let's see, I do have another piece of cardstock here, so I don't want to waste my paint. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Just try and get all of my paint off of there. These are not very dark, so I'm gonna go on top of them one more time. And 
and there we go. So that is step one. Now you're going to just wipe this off and wipe your balloon off and do two more colors and set them aside to dry. So once they have dried, the next step is to use your fat permanent marker that we already had in our stash. And so we now we've got our dry ones and we are just going to take this and you can outline it however you want. I like it very squiggly. Um, if you want to just do a circle, if you want to even do little bumps like a flower, um, however you want to do that. But I just go ahead and I stay within my paint. If you go outside your paint when you cut it out, you're going to have a white spot there. That's okay because they still look very nice. So I'm just going to just kind of squiggle around inside my paint like that. Once you've got that done, then you're going to take your pen, your marker, and you're just going to like dot a center. So you're going to want to do that until it's about as full as you want it. I kind of like to make it a little bit full. And if it's not full enough, just go back and put in a few more dots because you know all your flowers have centers, so we want to make sure we have a center in there. And so now we will have little flower centers. I have some here that are a little bit, because those two are quite dark together. That blue is quite dark. So here we go, we've got that done. And then once you, I'm gonna go ahead and just finish these three. And once you have all of your flower centers, in black, then to make them stand out just a little bit more and to give them a little more interest, we are going to just use a little bit of our white paint. So we'll just put a little bit of white paint here on our palette. Whoops. I don't know if I shook this or not, so I definitely want to shake it. This white paint from the Dollar Tree is not as um, heavy as your acrylic paints like this from, you know, that these came from Walmart. Um, so this is not an acrylic, I don't think. I think this might be, it doesn't really say what it is, but this might be like a tempera paint. So it's just not quite as dark, but that's okay. Um... So then we're going to just use our skewer, the pointy end of our skewer, and just kind of flatten that out a little bit. We are just going to put our skewer, hold on, let me clean this up. Put it over there. Okay, so then we'll just take our white paint and just dot our skewer in there, and then put it right on top of the black. Now, because this is kind of a thinner paint. If I try and do it a few times, it doesn't show up very well. So I just kind of just go, you know, one dip here and then one dip here because it just seems to make the white stay just a little bit more of a solid color. And I like the pointy end of my skewer because I like a nice little dot if you want bigger dots, you can use the other end of the skewer and just do it until you feel like it looks the way you want it. There's no right or wrong way. If they touch each other, that's fine. Okay, like, well, I'll just kind of show you if you want to do a bigger dot. So if you use the other end, you wind up with a bigger dot. I really don't care for the bigger dots. I like the little dots better. So, but, so once you have done that, you'll just set that aside and let that dry because it's paint. And so once you've done that, mm, I was going to do the white part on here. So 
but I'm not going to do it right this second because now I want to put my affirmations on here and I don't want to get the white paint on my hand. But here they are, dry and with the affirmations. That's why we needed the fine Sharpie or fine permanent marker. And the reason I like to use permanent marker is the acrylic paint will not smear if you put something wet on top of it once it's dry, and neither will the permanent marker. So if you want to make these shiny, I do not, but you could put a little bit of water glue or something on top to, or some kind of a clear coat that has a shine to it, Mod Podge gloss or something like that. Um, and so if you use a permanent marker and you use acrylic paint, it's not going to smear when you do it. And so that's why I like to use the permanent markers. You also could use a pen, but then you would want to make sure before you were to try and gloss it, if you wanted to, make sure that that pen does not smear before you use it. Um, so put it on something, let it dry a little bit, and then whatever gloss you want to use, Go ahead and put that gloss on there and see if that pen smears because you'd hate to go to all the work and then have and then have it smear so but so then what we're going to do is we're just going to put little affirmation words on here get those out of my way because i want to turn this as i go so get my paints out of the way and so what we're going to do is i just kind of because flowers you know have the little you know like petals like you do this to do petals so the first thing I do is put my word and then I go ahead and put the little lines on there to make the word kind of blend in make the word part of the the petals that you're drawing on there so I'm just going to say okay so we'll just do love so what you're going to do is you're just going to do a little bit of a squiggly line and then in cursive small l o v e and a little bit more of a squiggly line so there we have love and then what we're going to do is just very randomly just put some squiggly lines around and i kind of go around and then i try and go between like okay so here's our love the next one is there so this one comes up and covers this gap right here the next one covers that gap. There's a gap here, so I'm gonna do one that kind of goes around that gap. And you don't have to do that, but I just like to do that so that they, basically, so they kind of just don't line up. And so there we go, let's do hope. So we'll just do a little bit of a squiggly line, and then H. Oh, now I kind of want to go around my center, so I'm going to turn my paper just a little bit because where I started, it would have been hard for me to continue kind of rounding the word. Then go a little bit more of a squiggle after you're done with the word and put in a couple more squiggles and then just go around until you feel like you have enough squiggles. So it just depends on how big your outside circle is, whether you'll get like two or three rows. I usually get three. Let's do shine, that's one of my favorite words. So S, H, I really wanna turn this. I, N, E, and then a little bit more of a squiggle and a little dot on top of my eye. Some more squiggles and then our outside squiggles. And now there's no gap here, so I don't make a huge long line. I just, you know, put in some, just kind of making sure that where I get to where there are a couple of gaps that I kind of go in that area the next time. And so there we go. Now I have those three done. And I'll put the, I'm gonna put my white dots on there now so that they actually will be done. If you forget to put the white dots, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you don't have to have them, you can put them on later. I just like them because I think it makes the center look a little bit more like a center with the two colors there and it kind of also like 
separates that center being black and white from your words. Because everything else, your little squigglies and everything, those are all just black. So it gives the center a little more interest. And these are just so simple to do, but they're nice to just give out to people, give out to your friends, just a nice little affirmation they can pin in their pocket or their purse. And um, if you want, this is on cardstock, so that makes them nice and steady. And I put them on cards, I put them in cards. Um, but um, if you want them more sturdy, if somebody really might wanna put it in their pocket or something, then um, you could glue it to like a cereal box or something to make it a little more sturdy. A couple layers of cereal box glued together and then glue this on top of it. And I'm gonna try and cut the row that I didn't just put the white paint on. And normally what I do is I do cut them into squares set these aside because they need to dry and because you start out with your original colors but they need to dry before you can go any farther I usually make like three or four sets so like I've got the orange and red do yellow and you know or the orange and the red and the yellow and then do like yellow and green purple and blue you know blue and red whatever, you know, just do like a few different mix and matches so that by the time you're done, let's say with your four set of colors of just putting the balloon dots on, your first ones will be pretty much dry unless you did them really, really heavy. So then I just cut them apart. And what I do is I don't try and be exact and cut right on that black line. I leave an edge. It's just easier because that edge does not have to be perfect as far as like if I'm one eighth of an inch here and only a sixteenth of an inch over here, that doesn't matter. I just kind of follow the contour of the black line that I put on there in a small gap with a little extra on the outside. And like I said, it doesn't have to be the same all the way around. And so there is our first one. And see, it, we have white here um, that's on the outside of the flower, and that looks good too. But like I said, if your black one comes out and around, do I have any here? I don't. Um, if your black line goes out into the white, that's okay because that looks nice too. And I usually, when I'm all done, I do sit and cut them all out, and I have a little box that I stick them in, um, because then they're done and it's kind of nice. But if you want to just leave them on the paper so you can put them in a file folder or something and then go in and cut them out as you go. You could do it that way too. I just think, um, how do I wanna say it? I feel more accomplished when I cut them out and then have a pile of them sitting there. And because the cutting is really pretty easy, since you're not trying to stay exactly on that line, um, it doesn't really take very long at all to cut them out. And it is just a nice thing if you're working in your art room during the day and then you wanna go, you know, sit with the family in the evening and watch TV. Um, it is something nice if you like to keep your hands busy. Um, something nice to just do as you're sitting on the couch in the evening with the family and you can just cut these out. They're already dry. And so you don't really need to worry about it. They don't make a huge mess because your pieces, kind, you know, you just have those pieces. So it's not like a bunch of little tiny bits that you're having to pick up later. And, you know, I always say that I do these things as I watch TV. I don't really watch. I more listen and, you know, look up here and there. Um... You know, it's not something I can actually watch the TV while I'm doing it, but my hands just really, I don't, sometimes really exciting movies I'll watch or whatever, but if we're just watching a show that 
you know, continues week to week or whatever. Um, I know all the characters and their voices and everything else, so I just like to have my hands busy. And so this is the type of thing that I like to do in order to do that. So hubby and I are in the same room and kind of doing something together. And yet I'm not just sitting there feeling like I need to be doing something. So there we go. I mean, that was so easy to cut those out. And so now we just have all of these little bits or all of these little flowers that we can put onto a card. We can put them in our journals. You can even write on the back of them and tuck them into your journals or write on the back of them and glue them into your journals if you don't want anyone to see what's on there. But so, you know, here are some more that, you know, you can't probably see them that well, but you know, we've got shine and we have dream. And see, the thing is, is it really does blend in very nicely. So, you know, I did these and this was a matter of just three different pages that I did. And I wound up with all of these. Actually, it probably wound up being like four pages because um, I always wind up with a little bit extra. You know, even though I know not to put a whole bunch of paint down there, um, there's always just a little bit of paint left over to wind up with your extra page. And then what I do is when I do the next color, um, I just use this same page to put those colors on here. And usually I wind up with about one extra page. So, but these are just three or four sheets of cardstock, a little tiny bit of paint, and really a little tiny bit of time. It just does not take that long. And I think that they are just a really fun thing to make. So I hope that you make them. And like I said, if you want, you can make them heavier so that, um, you know, if someone wants to carry them, in a place that's not super sturdy. You know, they'll still hold up, but they're nice to make them this way. And um, then you can, like I said, put them on a card, put them in a journal or something like that. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. For next week, we are going to need, hold on a second. <coughs> Let me see here. I have to find next, I have to look in my book. Okay, so we are going to need a couple of plastic file folders. These came in a two pack at the Dollar Tree, but I've had them for a while, but I decided not to buy myself two more because I really didn't need them. So I took these out of my stash and I will put them in my Build Your Stash stash. Um, and so that we can use them with that whenever we want. But so a couple of plastic file folders. And if you can't get a hold of any, you can always, and these are like containers, um, you know, like they hold things. So that's kind of nice. But you can also just get like little, um, like separators or, um, you know, anything that's plastic. And even if you can't get a hold of those, then even a Walmart bag will work. Just a nice size sheet of plastic is what you're going to need. And um, and I did buy them, but I don't know what I did with them. Kids markers, the, the eight pack of kids markers. Now we already have those in our stash, but mine are starting to get low. So if you still have a whole lot of ink in them, um, you don't have to get those either. But so we are going to need um, two plastics, two square plastics, and um, some kids markers, eight pack of kids markers for next week, and a package of white tissue paper or solid, well, really white would be the best, um, at least to start with. So white paper and kids markers and two plastics of some sort. 
So thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. If you enjoy my videos, share them with your friends, share them around on whatever social media that you have um, with your crafty friends. I would really appreciate that. I don't do much in the way of social media, so that really does help me out. Thanks again, and I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.